Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society, and welcome to our first virtual annual general meeting. Though we love to meet face-to-face -face with Friends of Science members at our AGMs and at our events, this time at least I'll be able to present what I normally present to our small gathering at the AGM to all of our members. So, in one sense, that's a benefit. The theme of this year's roundup of activity is a climate of oppression. Yes, the climate activists have one hand tightening the noose, but we push back. And this past year we had some wonderful news from Clintel, but I'll get into that a bit later. I want to run through some slides with you, showing some of the highlights of the past 18 months. Since we're not able to have our AGM as we normally do in the spring due to the pandemic, um, but this won't be a complete or chronological review, it's just going to be some highlights. So we'll post this PowerPoint and the video on our website where you can review it in detail. So let's begin. We start, well, with very sad news. Um, one of our co-founders, Albert Jacobs, passed away in February of 2020. We hope this compendium of material would have made him proud of the organization that he co-founded 18 years ago. And you're all members of this movement. Small movement, loyal members, we just keep plugging on. We're going to get there. So our last report to you was in May of 2019. Can you believe it? 18 months ago. It seems <laughs> so long ago. So let me take you back to January of 2019 when we released another collection of science presentations from the September 2018 Porto Conference where Friends of Science had sent me there to do some interviews and meet with people. Uh, we're grateful to Wolfgang Müller of Eike for the copy of the raw video and then we did the presentations that you see on our website ourselves. This was big news. We had two of our own videos go viral. One of them is a letter to Greta, and that has now almost 600,000 views. And the other one is the, me reading the Clintel announcement of their letter sent to the UN. That has over 700,000 views. That came about in a kind of funny way. You know, they'd issued a press release. We received it here in Canada. I, we sent it to over 500 media outlets and not one picked up the story. So I was furious and I decided, well, I'll just read the press release on camera, which is what I did. And people were very interested. They were interested to know that at that time there were 500 scientists who claimed there was no climate emergency and that we did have time and that nature is more influential than carbon dioxide in terms of climate change. So um, they were so interested that Facebook actually shut the video down. Anytime anyone posts it on Facebook, it gets shadowed and then the person gets told that if they continue to post this material that science feedback has said is not credible, then uh, they're, they'll be deplatformed. So that's why we're happy that our annual event this year included Donna Laframboise talking about climate activism and how it's undermining everyone's freedom, like freedom of speech. So the Facebook censor censorship of our No Climate Emergency video is a prime example. Now in April of 2019, we hosted one of our most popular events ever, Polar Bears and Solar Flares with Dr. Susan Crockford and Dr. Willie Soon. And both of the presentations are on our event page and also our YouTube channel if you happen to have missed them. And in the fall of 2019, we made national headlines because we thanked Elections Canada for recognizing that climate change is a partisan political issue. We don't get in the news very often. <laughs> so in July of 2019, uh, Friends of Science Society sent me to Tucson for a conference organized by the Doctors for Disaster Preparedness. And there I was able to get some more great interviews and science presentations, including this very popular one with Dr. Patrick Moore. 
Now we're happy to report that we have a great working relationship with Clintel, a group of now over 900 scientists and scholars from around the world. And they've issued a number of public statements and letters to officials denouncing the claim of the climate emergency and bringing common sense to the climate debate. We are also very pleased that award-winning Dutch filmmaker Marijn Poels, who's facing a climate of oppression in Europe, opted to offer us a chance to host his trilogy of climate documentaries on our YouTube channel. These are wonderful films, beautifully shot, very insightful. So they're free of charge, all three of them. So it's something for you to do over the holidays, maybe get out the popcorn, settle in. And also, we recently began cross-promoting the work of award-winning Calgary filmmaker Matthew Embry and his amazing film, Global Warning. Warning. He got a media blackout when it was released, and despite all of his other films getting vast publicity, and he's even been at TIFF, you know, the Toronto International Film Festival. His film has been selected for that, but not this film. So we did some interviews with him, kind of like, you know, meet the filmmaker. And this film is now running as sponsored content. That means that we get a very small portion of the viewing fee. And the fee is $6, something like that. So, but uh, it's a really great film. He really tried to cover both sides of the story in a very empathetic way. So you'll be surprised at what you see there. Now regarding reports, our faithful contributor Robert Lyman is so prolific, he turned out dozens of reports and articles for our blog on climate and energy topics, and these are just a few. For those of you who are existing members, you'll appreciate that our volunteers have regularly offered the PLYSI and extracts, the roundup of climate science findings and the roundup of world climate politics and, and uh, policy news. So these people work all week long trying to pull together the more interesting stories, assess them, summarize them, and put them into a pithy little mail out so that you can keep up with all the news that you never get in the mainstream media. And these can be found on our website archive along with our newsletters and our press releases. So have a look. If you've missed any of them or if you're a new member, you want to go back and see what, what people have been re reading and writing about, go have a look. Now, aside from Robert Lyman's reports, Friends of Science Communications team has been busy cranking out reports and communications as well. Um, these are commentaries on climate and energy issues, and these are also just a few examples. We do have more. Now, we had hoped to run our event in April with Donna Laframboise and Roy, Dr. Roy Spencer at the Red and White Club, as we usually do, but this was cancelled due to the pandemic restrictions. Uh, so we moved it online, and our next event will be with Dr. Roy Spencer in January 2021. So get your tickets now. Um, if you're a member, you have uh, free access included in your membership. So Friends of Science also had several speaking engagements and a chance to meet with the public at these events. And uh, I want to say personally, I'm very grateful to the Freedom Talk crew for inviting me to come and talk with the, the wonderful group of people that they gathered together. I really enjoyed hearing the other speakers and being part of the event and loved meeting all of the uh, people in attendance. The audience were just great, very supportive, very interested in everything that we're up to. Now, several of our founders were or are grandparents, and most of them are quite concerned about the anxiety that children are feeling about climate change. So this year we embarked on a new little project. We're making a few kind of children's stories just to give children a slightly lighthearted, different perspective on the climate issues that they hear about. So these are recommended viewing with an adult so that you can sit and talk with them a bit about the, about the videos, try and help them get some perspective on things. Um, and I've also turned them into ebooks, so that could be fun too. Now, we also put out lots and lots of videos this past 18 months. And um, 
these seem to be very popular on social media and it's a great plain language way to reach out to people, to ordinary people and to policymakers. To explain things in a, sort of a simplified way, we usually back it up with a report and other references. So one of our volunteer teams spent many hours organizing playlists of video materials. So they're all organized by a similar topic. And these images in the PowerPoint, which are posted on our blog, might also help you search out and find a video that you might like. Maybe you haven't seen one, something new. And once this PowerPoint is posted online, you can also put it up on your computer and then you know, zoom in to see the different titles and you might see something you haven't seen yet. Lots of people are not aware that we have a very active blog. So we've compiled again this year a big book of blog posts, which is really kind of a compendium of all the articles and reports posted on our blog. <clears throat> and these will uh, cover the past 18 months with a bit of overlap. Um, and you can use it as a reference file because the links are right there in the headline. So if you see something you'd like to read and you've got it up in your computer, you can just click right through. But we hope that it will also give you a sense of the scope of work that we engage in and how much work we do on the limited funds that we have and how much we maximize the money that you have sent as donors and members to help us do this work. And we hope that you'll be gratified to see all the things that we're addressing and um, the, the many topics that we have. So hopefully that's a useful item for everyone as well. So that's a quick roundup of the past year, well, the past 18 months. And I'd like to personally thank you all for being members of Friends of Science, for supporting us in this work, for trying to open up the climate dialogue, bring some common sense to things, um, despite the difficult times that we've all faced this past year. I do hope that everybody can take a bit of time and, you know, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And think of the good things that you do have in life. Um, let's hope that 2021 gets back to the old normal and where we can have more peace, more joy, more certainty, and more prosperity with fewer health threats. Let's hope that we can heal from this disastrous year and that more common sense will become central to the climate change discussion. And let's hope that we can utterly destroy this climate of oppression with facts, evidence, good cheer, and open civil debate. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. Thank you. La na na na, la na na na, na na na, hey you, find out. Changing your mind and be that one for that few.
Na 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 na. 